Hi, welcome back to Coder Prodigy. I'm Daniel, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to program a snake game in Scratch. I'm really excited, so let's get to it. So the first thing that I want you to do is to go to the Scratch homepage, scratch.mit.edu. You've probably seen this website before. And if you don't have an account, go ahead and create one now. It should only take a few minutes. And if you need any help, go ask an adult, maybe your parents, to help you create an account here on Scratch. Now, I'm pretty sure you already have an account. So if you don't, pause the video until you can create an account. And after that, feel free to move on with the video. Now, after you're done, let's go to here where it says my stuff, this folder icon over here. So go ahead and click that. And this will get you to the place where you have all your Scratch projects. Now, I have quite a lot because I teach programming here at Coda Prodigy, and this is all the programming projects that I teach the kids. And go ahead and click on this button where it says new project. So click here and Scratch will create an empty Scratch project for you. Now, currently, this Scratch project doesn't have any code and has only a single sprite, this one called sprite one, that looks like a cat. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this sprite, so I'm going to click this trash can icon because we're going to create everything for our game ourselves. So first, let's go set our backdrop because white is pretty boring and uh, go ahead and click the backdrop here at the very right side of the screen. And after that, go here at the bottom right and choose a backdrop. Now, you can choose any setting that you like. I'm going to choose a very simple blue sky, so I'm going to click on this one, blue sky 2, but you can pick any environment that you like. I'm going to choose blue sky because our snake is going to be more visible in this way. So, we have our backdrop. Now, we're going to create two sprites for this game. First is going to be our sprite for the snake and another sprite for the fruits that we are going to chase on the screen. So I'm going to go here at the bottom right and I'm going to hover on this cat and I'm going to click on this paint icon over here because we're going to draw our snake sprite ourselves. So right now we have our first sprite called sprite one. I'm going to name this snake and this snake sprite currently doesn't have any costume or it has an empty costume. Now I'm going to zoom into this costume editor a little bit and I'm going to draw a rectangle that looks like a snake. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on this square icon here at the left, on the left, and I'm going to draw a square, maybe this big, and in order to draw a perfect square, hold the shift key and then drag from somewhere on your um, on your screen over here and then let go. Now we're going to take care of the size of the square and the color of the square, but first I'm going to remove the black sides of it just so that I have a simple colored square. So I'm going to go over here at the top where it says number four. So I'm going to click here and instead of number four, I'm going to put in zero. So zero means no sides, no sides at all. So this is an empty purple square on my screen. Now, once the square is still selected, go ahead and click on this fill button over here. And here you can choose any color that you like. I'm going to choose maybe a pinkish or reddish color, something like this. All right, so I'm going to choose this color. Now, I'm going to click here at the uh, top left where you have the cursor to select. And I'm going to click on the square again to make sure that I've selected because right now, once you see it on the stage, you'll see that it's quite big. I'm going to make it much smaller than that. So once it's selected, I'm going to drag from one of the corners of the square and make it much smaller, maybe something like this. So once you have your square look something like this with respect to the stage, then you can feel free to let go or you can adjust as needed. Now, the second thing that's very, very important is that I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to drag the square until the cross, the center of the square, overlaps exactly on that black cross that you see behind it. So I'm going to perfectly align these two so that the square is in the middle. So this is very, very important and this will help position our snake on the screen. All right, then you can feel free to let go. So this will be the head of the snake, but right now the head of the snake doesn't quite look like a snake, so we're going to design two small eyes here. So I'm going to click on this circle icon 
and I'm going to click on the fill button so that I can create the white color. So I'm going to drag the saturation down to zero so that I have the color white. Now with the circle icon selected and with the color white selected, I'm going to drag two small circles over here. And if you want to drag perfect circles, I'm keeping the shift key on my keyboard pressed. So right now I'm going to release and right now I have one eye. So I'm going to move this eye just a little bit to the top and then I'm going to drag yet another circle of the same size, maybe something like this, and I'm going to position it right underneath. So right now our square has two eyes pointing in the direction right. So something like this. This will be our stylized snake's head. All right, now we're going to create yet another costume for the snake's tail still in this sprite. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this costume over here and I'm going to click duplicate. So right now we're going to have two costumes with the same aspect over here that look the same. And on costume number two, I'm going to go ahead and click on the arrow sign over here at the top left to select these circles and I'm going to click delete to remove them. So I'm going to be left with just the pink square. Now I'm going to click on the square to select it. And I'm going to change its color because we want the snake's tail to look a little different. So I'm going to click on the color selector over here and you can choose a different kind of color. I'm going to choose a dark green. You can choose any color that you like. Maybe you don't like the colors that I choose. So I'm going to pick this green color over here. All right, so now we're done with the snake sprite. We need to create another sprite for the fruits that we're going to pick in the maze. So I'm going to click on choose a sprite. So hover over the cat icon and click it. And now I'm going to search in the, uh, in the search bar over here, or I'm going to click on apple. So I'm going to search for fruit. And you notice that you have a lot of fruits over here. We have strawberries, bananas, oranges, watermelons, and so on and so forth. I'm going to click this very simple apple. So notice that our apple is quite big. So I'm going to go edit its costume too. So I'm going to click on the costumes tab and I'm going to select everything. So now that I have my cursor, my arrow selected over here, I can drag a selection a rectangle and I'm going to select everything and now I have this apple costume over here that I can shrink to a size that I like maybe something that is pretty much equal to the snake's head not too big not too small now after I've shrunk it I'm going to drag its center over here the the cross that you see in the middle of the apple and I'm going to make it overlap with the black circle with the cross that you see behind it so I'm going to snap it right over here. This is also very important for us to program these correctly. All right. Now we have our sprites in place with the costumes ready and we're ready to write some code. So let me go click on my snake sprite and I'm going to start programming my first script. So I'm going to click on the yellow event section and I'm going to drag a script starting with when flag clicked. So when the flag is clicked, we're going to start a script that the snake will execute, that the computer will execute for this sprite. So the first thing that I'm going to program the sprite to do is move to the center of the screen because the game will start from there. So I'm going to click on the blue motion section and I'm going to drag this go to block and snap it right underneath the when flag click block. And I'm going to say go to x zero and y zero. These two are position numbers. X0 and Y0 means that this sprite will move to the exact center of the stage that you see here on the right. So when I click the flag, notice that our snake moves to the center of the stage. All right. So wherever I drag it on the stage, when I click the green flag, it always, always moves to the center. All right, now after it moves to the center, I'm going to make it point into the direction right and change its costume to the snake's head. So I'm going to drag this blue block point in direction 90. 90 means direction right as this diagram here, as this little pop-up will show you. And then after that, I'm going to make the snake sprite change its costume to the pinkish snake head. 
So I'm going to go to the purple look section and I'm going to say switch costume two. And we have only costume one and costume two. The costume one is for the snake's head. Now, just to make things very, very clear and very obvious, you can name these costumes. So you can go to the costumes tab and click on the first costume and you can name it by calling it head. And if you click on the second costume, you can name it tail just to make things very obvious in the code that we're going to write. And when you get back to the code, you'll see that the block says switch costume to head. So now when you click the flag, notice that our snake points to the right with its eyes pointing to the right and its costume is that pinkish snake head. All right, now we're going to program how to move this snake. So after I switch the costume to head, I'm going to add a forever block that's going to repeat a bunch of movements. So I'm going to go to the light orange control section and I'm going to drag a forever block and I'm going to snap it after that. So in this forever block, I'm going to move a certain number of steps. So I'm going to go to motion, the blue section, and I'm going to drag this blue section, this blue block, move 10 steps and I'm going to add it to the forever block. And instead of 10, I'm going to put in 20. We're going to change this number depending on how big our snake actually is on the screen so that our games looks good. Now, after the move 20 steps, I'm going to add a wait block and we're going to also customize the waiting time so that our code is not too fast or too slow. So I'm going to go to the orange control section and I'm going to drag this first wait block and I'm going to add it after that. Right now we're waiting one second and I'm going to add a smaller number than one. I'm gonna say 0 0.2 seconds. 0 0.2 is a decimal number which is smaller than one. That means our game is a little faster. So right now when we click our flag, our snake will start to move to the right. So it will move something like this. See how it moves on its own. Now, obviously it will be stuck here at the edge of the stage and it won't be able to move any further. And we will be able to program our game over event or game over state when our snake crashes into the wall, all right? But that's something for later. Now, we need to program the snake so that it's controllable, so that we can control it with our keyboard, either with up, down, left, or right. So I'm going to start another script, and that is going to have a forever block, which will always check if we're pressing a key. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the yellow event section, and I'm going to drag another script when flag clicked. So when I click the flag, both of these scripts will be executed by the computer. So, then I'm going to go to control and I'm going to drag this forever block and inside forever I'm going to check if I'm pressing any error key. So I'm going to drag this if block and if I'm pressing for example the up arrow key, I'm going to change the direction of the snake to up. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to this light blue sensing section and I'm going to drag this diamond shaped key space pressed and instead of space I'm going to select the up arrow. So if the up arrow key is pressed I'm going to program the snake to change its direction. So I'm going to go to motion the blue section and I'm going to drag this point in direction block and I'm going to drag it here so point in direction and after I click this number you notice that this little pop-up appears I'm going to drag it to point to up so direction zero. So right now, if I'm pressing the up arrow key at any point, our snake will point in the up direction. And because it's pointing in the up direction, then it will start moving upwards because I'm having this block move 20 steps in the other script. So if I click the flag and in the meantime, I'm pressing the up key, notice that my snake points upwards and it may crash into the up wall. Now we need to program the other conditions for the other keys. So I'm going to duplicate this if block. So I'm going to right click on this if block and I'm going to click on duplicate. And this time I'm going to say if the key down arrow is pressed, I'm going to point in direction down. So I'm going to click on this zero number and I'm going to drag the slider to down. Notice that direction becomes 180. 180 means 180 degrees, which means down. So I'm going to drag this after that. Make sure you have both if blocks 
at the same level in the forever loop. Don't do something like this where you have an if block inside another if block. So make sure both of them are at the same level. All right, good. Now, all we need to do is add two more if blocks for the left arrow key and the right arrow key. So let's do the left arrow first, and I'm going to point in direction. I'm going to drag the slider to the left, and we have a very weird number here, minus 90, and I'm going to drag this if block, and I'm going to place it at the same level with the other ones, and I'm going to duplicate this if block once more, and I'm going to select the right arrow key, and I'm going to drag the slider to the right this time around. And then I'm going to place it after that. So we now have four conditions, up arrow direction zero, down arrow direction down, left arrow direction left, and right arrow direction right. So now we can program the snake to follow our keyboard. So let's go click the flag over here and let's start moving our snake around. So now if I hit the up or down and left and right arrow keys, our snake can move in all the four directions. This is really cool. All right, now we need to program the tail of the snake. Now, the way that we're going to create the tail of the snake is by creating clones of the snake sprite. And those clones will take the costume with the green square, the tail of the snake. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to navigate back to my first script, the smaller one with a forever loop. And I'm going to create a small block over here to create clone of myself. And we're going to program the clones after that. So I'm going to go to the orange control section and I'm going to add another block here, create clone of myself. And I'm going to move that at the top of the forever loop. So I'm going to say create clone of myself, move 20 steps and then wait this number of seconds. All right. So when we create a clone of the snake, the snake will look something like this. All right. So look at that. The snake leaves basically leaves tracks everywhere it goes. Now we need to program these clones to run their own thing. So they're going to have their own script. So I'm going to start a script with when I start as a clone at the bottom of the control section right over here. So when I start as a clone, we're going to program our clones to do several things. So when I start as a clone, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to switch its costume to the green tail costume. So I'm going to go to looks, the purple section, and I'm going to switch the costume to tail. So when I switch the costume to tail, notice how the program looks like. So our snake leaves a green track everywhere. So everywhere it goes, our snake leaves a green mark on the screen. All right. Now we need to delete these clones after a while so that we have the impression that our snake moves with its tail on the screen. So after a while, I'm going to delete these clones. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to control and I'm going to add a wait block. And after one second, I'm going to delete this clone from the screen. And I'm going to scroll down the section with control and I'm going to add delete this clone. Now, if you hit the flag, notice what happens. Our snake leaves a mark on the screen, but that mark disappears. So the impression is that our snake is moving with its tail on the screen. So we have a real snake here on the screen. Now we need to program how big this tail is going to be depending on how many fruits you've eaten. Now let's imagine, for example, that you've eaten five fruits. Now how big is the snake going to be? It's going to be five squares long. So that means that every clone will wait five times the time it takes for the snake to make a movement. Now the time for, for the snake to make a movement is 0 0.2 seconds. So if you've eaten five fruits, you need the clones to wait five times this number, 0 0.2. So here, instead of one second, I'm going to put a mathematical operator to multiply. So I'm going to go to operators and I'm going to drag this star operator, the multiplication, the multiply operator, and I'm going to place it here. And I'm going to say, wait five times 0 0.2 seconds. So assuming that our snake is five squares long, each square is going to wait five times 0 0.2 because 0 0.2 is the time it takes 
for the head of the snake to make a move. So here's how this is going to work. Now if I hit the flag, notice that our snake is exactly five squares long. If I wait a smaller amount of time, let's say if I wait three times 0 0.2, then our snake will be shorter. So if I hit the flag, notice that our snake is shorter this time around. It has only three squares. Now let's say that the number of fruits that we've eaten is the score for our game. So in this case, if we've eaten three fruits, then our score should be three. Then in this case, we need to create a variable. So you probably remember what a variable is in Scratch. A variable is a piece of information that the computer remembers. And this variable can be changed as your program, as your scripts are running. So here we have the orange variables section and we're going to make a variable. I'm going to call this score and I'm going to click OK. And now we have a score variable that starts at zero. So this is the value that the computer will remember. Now we're going to program our script to always start at the number zero for the score. So in one of the scripts, either one, I'm going to drag this orange set block. And instead of set my variable, I'm going to set the score to zero. So we, it said that we initialize the score to zero. We set a starting value. So we have set score to zero. Now, depending on the value for score and the apple is going to take care of that, we're going to make the clones wait a certain amount of time. So I'm going to drag this rounded score block instead of where I have the number three. So the bigger the score is, the longer each clone will wait. And because the clones will wait longer, and so the snake will seem bigger. Now, this score starts at zero, which means our snake is very, very short. And at the beginning, our snake doesn't really have any length. All right. So our score doesn't really do anything. But when we eat an apple, the apple will take care to change or increase this score. And once the score increases, our snake will automatically become a bit longer. All right, now let's program the apple to help us increase our score in this game. So click on the apple sprite and let's start programming this one. So I'm going to click on the yellow event section and I'm going to drag this when flag click blocked. All right, so when the flag is clicked, I want the apple to move to a random place on the stage. So I'm going to go to motion, the blue section, and I'm going to drag this go to random position. Random position means anywhere on the screen and the computer will choose at random. Now, in a forever block, I'm going to wait until the snake touches me. So I'm going to go to control, the orange section, and I'm going to drag a forever block. And inside, I'm going to say, if I'm being touched by the snake, then I'm going to increase the score and I'm going to reset my position. I'm going to go to a random position yet again. So I'm going to say, if touching snake, so I'm going to go to the light blue sensing section. And if I'm touching the snake, so look at this. So if I'm touching the snake, I'm going to again, go to a random place and then change the score by one. So I'm going to go back to the blue motion section. I'm going to say go to random position, and then I'm going to increase my score variable by one. So I'm going to go to the orange variable section, and I'm going to drag this change block. And I'm going to place it right after go to random position. And instead of my variable, I'm going to select score. So every time the snake touches the apple, the apple will go to a random position and will change the score by one. All right, so let's see how this works. So if I hit the flag, notice that the apple resets at a random place on the screen. And if I hit the apple, notice that my score increases to one and my snake now has one square behind it. And if I touch the snake again, if I touch the apple again, my length will be two. And if I touch the apple again, my length will be three. And if I touch the apple again, my score will be four and my snake will grow much longer. All right, awesome. Now, 
We've programmed our snake to grow after we've touched the apple. Now all we need to do is program the end game, the game over, if the snake eats its own tail or if it crashes into one of the walls of the stage. Now before I get to do that, I'm going to have to make some adjustments to our snake. Because if our snake becomes too long, when it changes direction, the snake won't turn really well because the size of the square might be too big or too small with respect to the number of steps that each move is going to make. So in this case my square is a little bit big so I'm going to increase my number of steps to say 25 and let's say that I eat one of these apples and notice that the squares are now don't actually overlap with each other like they did last time. So this is a good measure to have. If you want to program this game correctly, you need to increase or decrease the number of steps that you make over here so that the squares of the snake don't actually overlap. This is actually pretty important because otherwise we won't be able to program the end game correctly. All right, so the squares don't need to overlap with each other. All right, so the snake needs to look something like this. And you need to maybe grow or shrink the number of steps that the snake makes at any one point so that your game looks something like this. All right, so now I've eaten the apple 10 times and I'm going to program the situation where our snake eats its own tail, for example, something like this. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this small script and I'm going to move it so that it sits on the right. That is because I'm going to need quite a lot of space here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that if the snake's head is too far to the left, maybe something like this, or too far down, or too far up, or too far to the right, then I'm going to declare a game over and I'm going to stop the game. Now here's how we can express that in a script that is in code. So I'm going to go to control and I'm going to drag an if block and I'm going to put it in open space. Now, how do we say that the snake's head is too far to the left? Well, we say that the snake's head is too far to the left if its number x over here is too small. So if x position is less than a number, then we say that the snake's head is too far to the left. So I'm going to go to the operator section and I'm going to drag this less than operator and in the first space I'm going to go to the motion section and I'm going to put in x position and I'm going to say if x position is less than and I'm going to say minus 235 so this will be a limit and if the x position is less than this number then I'm going to consider that the snake has crashed into the left wall and I'm going to drag this block into the open space because we're going to have multiple conditions here and then I'm going to say if the snake's head is too far down and the snake is too far down if the number y over here is too small so I'm going to have a very similar diamond shaped block over here I'm going to go to operators drag the less than block and in the first space I'm going to go to motion I'm going to drag y position so if y position is less than and I'm going to say minus 175 so this is how we can say that the snake's head is too far down then if the snake is too far right then its x value the number x is too big so I'm going to go to operators and I'm going to drag this greater than operator so make sure you select the right one so this is the greater than block and I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to drag X position. So if X position is bigger than 235 without the minus sign. All right. And then finally, I'm going to have a similar block for the snake's position to be too far up. So in the case that the snake's Y value is too big, then I'm going to have to consider that the snake crashes to the up wall. So I'm going to go to operators, bring in the greater than block. So place it here and in the space I'm going to put in from the motion section I'm going to place the Y position so if the Y position is bigger than 175 then I'm going to think that the snake has crashed into the up wall now we're going to combine all of these diamond shaped blocks into one giant condition so I'm going to go to the 
green operator section yet again, and I'm going to drag this or block, which has two spaces. So for example, I'm going to say if X position is less than 235, or, and then I'm going to drag another or block, and then I'm going to drag another one, and I'm going to place it in this other space. And I'm in these diamond shaped blocks, I'm going to place all the other blocks that I've created so far. All right, so I'm going to place them right over here. And I've, you need to make sure that you place the blocks correctly. All right. Okay, cool. So we have this giant diamond shaped block that says if X position is less than minus 235, or Y position is less than minus 175, or the X position is bigger than 235, or the Y position is bigger than 175. So this is the giant condition that we're going to use. So if this thing is true, so I'm going to place it here. So we have this giant if block. So if this thing happens, then I'm going to stop the game because that is game over. I've crashed into a wall. So I'm going to go to the orange control section and I'm going to drag this stop all block. All right, cool. So we have a giant if block over here that can declare a stop all block. Now it's not part of a script. I'm going to stitch it shortly. Now, we are going to have another condition here for if the snake touches its own tail. So I'm going to go to control and I'm going to drag another if block and I'm going to snap it right after the first giant one. And then I'm going to go to the light blue sensing section and I'm going to drag this touching color block. So if the snake's head touches the green color of its tail, then that means I'm eating my own tail. So I need to stop the game. So now we need to select the green color that you created. Now, in order to do that, you need to go to costumes and select the tail costume so that our, your square turns green here. And then from the code, you need to select that green color. So from this color selector, click this eyedropper over here and then go to the right where you have the stage and then click on the green color of your tail. So this is how you can select the right color. So if you're touching this green color, you need to stop the game again. So I'm gonna go to control and I'm going to drag this stop all script and I'm gonna place it inside. Now, these two if blocks will tell us if we want to stop the game. So the computer will detect if these conditions are true, and if so, they will stop the game. And I'm going to drag these two if blocks, and I'm going to place them right after the move 25 steps. Now, your number 25 may be different there, but after the move block, and I'm going to place these two right inside. So I'm going to have them like this. And at this point, our game should be pretty much complete. So now we can detect whether we are crashing into the wall or if we're eating our own tail. So if I hit the flag, we can go play. So let me go eat one of these apples. And now I have a tail one, then we have tail two, tail three. And let me go eat my own tail to see how the computer will automatically detect that. So look at that. After I've eaten my own tail, the computer has detected that and has stopped the game. I've lost, but the score is equal to 5. So you can keep a track of your own high scores. And let's go test the other thing again if I'm crashing into the wall. So let's say I'm crashing here. Let's say I'm eating this apple and then I crash into the wall. Notice that the computer has stopped the game again. So now we can end our game if we detect the right conditions. So this will be our first full snake game in Scratch. Congratulations and thank you for following along so far. This is your own game. So enjoy it and I hope you crack those high scores. And if you like this video, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe to the Coder Prodigy YouTube channel. And I'm going to teach you various techniques and I'm going to teach you how to make games and program your own games and animations and stories in Scratch and other programming languages. I'm Daniel and I teach kids to code at Coder Prodigy. I'm gonna see you in the next video.